Hey guys, <clears throat> I hope you all are well. In 1 Samuel 16 verse 13, it says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Today we're going to look at the anointing of God. So stay with me. Most gracious and precious Heavenly Father, as we look at the anointing in your word today, dear Lord, help us to understand what your anointing in us is. Help us to reach the goals and plans you have for us all by your holy power. For we can't do anything without you, dear Lord. In Jesus' holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, guys. So how can we face life's most crushing challenges with God's praise on our lips and his confidence in our choices. Be directed, comforted, and empowered by his spirit within us is the only sure way to live with supernatural success when we encounter natural events that seek to derail us. We must be anointed. David's rule brings anointing back to the forefront of our minds as we look in 1 Chronicles chapter 14. In fact, we can't escape it, for it's tucked in verse 8 all the way to the end of the chapter. We see the windfall of consequences anointing brings in David's story and in our story. The anointing on David's life was essential to accomplish God's purposes. And we must have it to accomplish his plans for us. Without it, everything we do will only be a shell of activity that will leave us breathless from a series of frustrated events. Amounting to very little. So with God's anointing, we can face life circumstances with courage, joy, and inner peace. God established David as a symbolic display. A, the prophet Samuel delivered God's anointing. See, to David's family, Saul's pouring the oil symbolizes unique calling and divine appointment. The word anoint appears over 140 times throughout scripture. The word anoint comes from the Hebrew word. The word is used for ceremonial induction into leadership offices by the pouring of the oil from a horn on the head of the individual. Anointing set apart and consecrated a person to divine service. Anointing with oil was often accompanied by another import, important and interesting spiritual event. When Samuel anointed David, the Spirit of God rested on him in a new way from that day forward to empower and strengthen him for a particular task at hand. And we see that in 1 Samuel 16, 13. Anointing means a divine enablement to accomplish a divine task or a supernatural empowering to accomplish supernatural goals. See, God's goals and plans for us require his power in our natural ability, we might be able to teach a class or mother children, um, stay in a marriage or write a book, but to fulfill the supernatural purposes of this natural activity demands an anointing by God's spirit. The anointing causes a woman with children to become a developer of Christian soldiers. The anointing gives a mere speaker a message that penetrates the heart of the listeners. An author can pen a book without the anointing, but only the anointed author can write words that carry the weight of God to accomplish eternal purposes in the lives of its readers. As believers, 
God calls us to accomplish divine tasks for His glory. We must have the anointing of God's Spirit. See, Paul showed the connection between David's life and ours in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 through 22. According to these verses, those who place faith in Christ are not only established, but also anointed by God. As David was endowed with the Spirit's presence from the day of his anointing, we have been anointed with the indwelling Spirit's presence from the day of our salvation. We see that in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. It makes clear to us that this anointing by the Holy Spirit occurs the moment we believe in Christ for salvation of our sins. The Spirit lives in us, and we are sealed and anointed by Him to accomplish God's pre-planned purpose. So if you're a believer, you're anointed right where you're at. Your task is to rely on the power of God who indwells you so you can be empowered to do what you cannot do on your own. The Spirit's presence in our lives brings many benefits, but three main purposes relate to our study. We are anointed by the Spirit to authenticate divine ownership. We belong to God and God belongs to us to guarantee divine completion. We are kept by God until the day of his return and empowered for divine purposes. We are equipped to accomplish spiritual tasks. The Holy Spirit seals or authenticates your relationship with God. We have been sealed by God and belong to him. The Spirit's presence is the anointing, guaranteeing that he who has begun a good work will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And that's in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. By no means am I suggesting that the spirit-filled life sees miraculous events at the snap of a finger. Those waiting on a life of continuous miracles as a sign of God's anointing will lead a frustrated existence as they try to manipulate God. On the contrary, the anointed life engages daily and normal activities in a supernatural way. When you have patience in your mothering, holiness in your singleness, gentleness in your response, and contentment in your circumstances and empowerment in the face of your challenges, you are experiencing the greatest miracle of all, God's presence appearing in your life. So here are some marks of a spiritual field life. Although we never reach perfection in these areas, they are some great guidelines. Number one, we have an inner dynamic to handle life's pressures. Number two, we can be joyful regardless of the circumstances. Number three, we have the capacity to grasp the deep things of God that he discloses to us in his book. Number four, we have little difficulty maintaining a positive attitude of unselfishness, servanthood, and humility. Number five, we have a keen sense of discernment. We sense evil. Number six, we can love and be loved in return. Number seven, we don't need to fear evil or demonic and satanic assault. Number eight, we are enabled to stand alone in confidence. Number nine, we experience inner assurance regarding decisions as well as right and wrong. Number 10, we can actually live worry-free. Number 11, 
we are able to minister to others through our spiritual gifts. And number 12, we have an intimate abiding relationship with the living God. So brothers and sisters, if you know Jesus, you are anointed, empowered to live supernaturally for the purpose of accomplishing God's task on earth. Only believers led and enabled by God's Spirit can accomplish His plans and purposes. Our attempts may achieve stunning success in the natural realm, but will not amount to much in God's economy. So, that gives you something to think about, and uh, that's all I have for you today. As always, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, like, share, and subscribe. Um, I'll post links somewhere. <laughs> They'll be somewhere here um, to other videos. If you uh, like these videos, check out some of the others. And if I don't see you at the next video, I hope to see you in heaven. Bye, guys. Love y'all.